Hello there, I'm Tim and he's over there. Hello. Uh, and this is How to Murder Feet, rambling with rambling. This is me on the South Downs way again. Um, this is uh, part three, I think. Maybe three? Yes, three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I'm in the village of South Harton. There it is, all very uh, picturesque. You might remember this from last time. Um, and I got a lift here today. By the, kind, yeah, uh, by the uh, kind, kind producer there, uh, which is just as well because it would take me about two and a half hours and I would have had gotten up about two hours earlier to get here today. So it's getting trickier, further and further away from uh, where I live, uh, the public transport means less actual hiking each day as well. So today I'm doing about 10 miles and heading to Cocking next, so uh, I better crack on. So here we are again. And already it's raining. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a grey one today, I think. A lot of uh, low cloud and uh, rain forecast on and off throughout the day. But that's okay. I'm ready for anything. Got my cool anorak. So this is basically where I left the trail last time. Came from up there last time. Came from up there this time. Down there to the village of South Harting. It's quite a hill actually to get to where I am from here. And then I need to cross the road over there and go all along that ridge and across the down there. Now, as I was coming up from the village, um, I noticed that most of the downs are in, in low cloud today. <laughs> so I don't think we're in for much in the way of spectacular views. Uh, just a bit of a bit, bit soggy day today, really. So, yeah, short day today, relatively speaking. Ten miles to Cocking. A village whom I imagine whose inhabitants have no sense of humour about place names whatsoever. Um, from there to get the bus home. Uh, so it's about it's mid-November. It's about five degrees today. Uh, and yes, not that windy, but quite rainy and grey. Try not to get any on the lens. Uh, also, I realise I've forgotten my little clip-on microphone as well, which is somewhat better at wind than the inbuilt microphone camera thing. So I need to. Oh look. I think that's the bus I would have been on if uh, if my co-host hadn't have given me a lift. He's gone off in search of a fried breakfast already. He's, he won't be joining me today. Uh, that's okay. And yeah, I'll make my own way home today. So I think the bus that I need leaves Cocking at about 5.30ish. It's about 10 now and I've got 10 miles. So basically I've got loads of time. I'd have to really be dawdling quite badly or break a leg or something not to reach it on time today the problem with this time of year is um, it's all gets dark quite early uh, so which means I, I want to try and avoid hiking through the night if I can and also want to get back home in a reasonable hour which means basically it takes longer to get to these places from home and it means that um, less time hiking each day which means the mileage has to come down to compensate so yeah 10 miles nothing too strenuous or exerting i mean there's a bit of up and down with that downs proper this 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 trip we'll see some proper hills today i think uh, and i'll get the map out when i find somewhere dry it's already raining all right see you later i'm gonna dry my phone off well, that's an interesting thing which you probably can't see zoom yeah, that there's a, a castle, or at least it seems like one on the on the face of it. Can't see much there at all. <laughs> Good. Some example of how foggy it all is up there, up on the hills. No general visibility. So that there is uh, is actually a Victorian folly, I believe. My, my local guide to the area told me before he uh, he drove off to find a cooked breakfast. Um, not actually an ancient 13th century castle at all, but um, a Victorian recreation. The landowner decided they wanted something striking and monumental on their hilltop, and so they decided to build a fake historic monument. It's a very Victorian thing. So, just over there is South Harting Down. Ooh, mind the barbed wire. Ha! Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, yes, which I'm going up onto now, and it's all basically in the clouds and the fog, and it's starting to rain quite hard as well, so I don't know what I'll be able to show you in terms of panoramic viewpoints. It's just a shame. Extremes of British weather, number three, fog. <sighs> right, I'll see what I can see up there and let you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the scenery I enjoy most about these trips. 
glorious, magnificent vistas rolling away, hill after hill. It's going to be 360. Yep. <laughs> I'm basically in a cloud at the moment. Uh, and heading on. Oh, it's a hiker coming out of the mist. Forlorn figure. Windy today, I've got the clip on mic as well, so who knows if you can even hear this. Still, it's nice to be out. I want to find some shelter. There we go, look, some, 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 some scenery, a view, just to prove that I am on a hill. Are the clouds lifting a little bit, or whether I'm just in the shelter of these trees a bit. I don't know, I come off of South Hart, uh, of Harting Down now, which is and it's a real shame because that was spectacular. I was up, I was up there midsummer last year or the year before, and it was absolutely glorious up there. It was big blue sky, you know, really high up in the sky, dark blue sort of thing, and there was blazing sunshine and long grasses blowing, hissing in the breeze, and there's like butterflies and bees and crickets and stuff, and just a really wonderful place to go for a big midsummer walk. But I uh, can't see bugger all up there today, and. If I go off the edge of the trail, I probably won't come back either. This is the kind of fog that you would get lost in. I've got a compass and I've got my survival whistle, but uh, you know, much easier just to stay on the path. There we go, you can see the actual path, the South Downs Trail. Difficult to lose that even in fog, which is just as well. So we've got the map, it's map time. So here we are today. Uh, I am just on, uh, finger, 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 there, where that green, that green part there, I'm just entering there, just coming off of the uh, Harting Downs. So we've got a beacon hill there. I'm not optimistic, frankly. It says it's a massive viewpoint in all directions at 242 elevation. Over there somewhere. But uh, given the uh, yeah, given the clouds today, <laughs> it'll only be just a big old panorama of grey nothing. So along the path, 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 path to Mount Sinai. Oh, right. Uh, path, 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 path. Zigzag. There's a big bend there somewhere in some woods. Back up the path, path, path. A lot of tight packed elevations, quite steep uh, steep ups and downs today, I think. Didding, Diddling Hill, yeah, good name. There's some great names out here. Uh, along past lots of tumuli. Uh, Cocking Down. Uh, and there's Cocking itself on the A286. I'll probably leave the path at that crossing there and take one of those little paths up to the village. Uh, and then, I don't know, I've seen a sign saying that was only seven miles away. I mean, I don't know, counting squares on this map. Each each of these square, each of the blue squares is one kilometre on this uh, scale. You know, this uh, outdoor leisure series. I reckon I'll probably be there just after lunch, to be honest. So, yeah. I mean, I could press on and on and on, but I don't even have the map for, for uh, the next one. <laughs> I'll have to... Uh, but, um, yes... Next, next station, next place I can get clear would be Amberley, somewhere up there. But that would be about 17 miles, and it's about half 10, 11 now. I don't think I'd make that before dark. So, yeah, public transport, a bit of a, bit of a faff. But no roundabout last time, last fortnight, last episode. After I'd done all that, I got, I got on the train uh, and ended up stuck because of signal points failures at Southampton Central for about two hours. So it took me about four hours to get home on a station. It's got a crowded freezing station platform on bonfire night with uh, fireworks going off overhead and making a hell of a racket and a lot of angry commu angry commuters on the platform. Uh, so yeah, the public transport's starting to become a real faff to be honest. I might have to start thinking about some hybrid solution where I basically drive to the nearest town and get small local buses to and from each end of the day's walk. That would allow me to get a bit further each day. Of course I'd have to drive home knackered in the legs, um, which is not going to be great. But also, I don't like the idea of leaving the car unattended in a pub car park for, for like 18 hours or whatever. Um, so, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, that's a problem for another time. I'll need to crack on today. I've got to keep warm. Don't stand around here for too long. I'm going to start to feel the cold. I'm actually prepared for the cold. It's about 5 degrees at the moment here. And with wind chill, probably about 2 to 3 feels like sort of temperature. But I've got extra trousers on. There we go. A titillating glimpse of ankle coming up. Here we go. Here are my uh, here's my leggings. It's uh, m &S, uh, thermal base layer leggings. They're thermal plus or whatever they're called. Uh, and I've got the matching t-shirt, long sleeves t-shirt thing on going on there as well. 
So yeah, but it's a difficult balance. You've got to not be too hot as you're walking because you know heat exhaustion, but obviously not too cold when you stop and stand still. So in this kind of temperature, I think I've probably got the right kind of layering on. I've got a spare jumper in the bag as well, just in case. But uh, if I keep moving, it should be all right. But yeah, no, no standing around in the gawping at the view for too long today. Uh, instead of two bottles of water in the bag, I've only got the one because uh, I'm not really using as nearly as much in this kind of temperatures. And this le lesser exertion, no huge backpack. Uh, I've got thermos full of coffee instead, so that'd be all right. Hot drinks on the way through. That'd be useful if I find myself stuck on a station platform for another four hours this evening as well. So yeah, relatively well prepared and feeling chipper. But uh, yeah, short day anyway today, so that'd be all right. Yeah, time to time to get on with it. Here's a bit more of uh, some fields. Yeah, look, I, th I think that's lifting. I can see a horizon almost. That's good. What if I were to go and do the last bit again? No, never go back. So I decided to go round the Beacon Hill to the south. There was an optional viewpoint, but uh, they look quite steep and there's no point exhausting myself getting tired and soaked and cold just for not being able to see anything except grey. So I'll probably have to come back in summer and try this again. Been amusing myself by uh, pretending to be a tracker on the path here using my primitive bushcraft horses look horseshoes i've seen horseshoes far apart enough side by side to indicate two horses it's probably a pair of riders come through i've seen three four different types of mountain bike tire hard to tell what direction the mountain bikes are going because the tires are not usually directional certainly not with mountain bikes anyway Quite a lot of different footprints, obviously. Maybe four or five. Perhaps one or two going each way. I don't know. Harder to tell. They're a bit they leave less of an impression. The boot there. What's mine look like? Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. That's quite distinctive. That sort of interwoven tread at the top there and the deeply impressed heel. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably very easy to follow. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, broadcasting my progress and putting it on YouTube doesn't help either. But yeah, so settled now. There's not so much, uh, not so much actual rain. It's just cloudy, foggy. Here we are. There you go. There's a QAR code that uh, you can try scanning in, play along at home, print screen, whatever. I guess it takes you to a website that tells you about the various places, but I haven't got time for that. I came out here to get away from technology, really. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the obvious uh, exception of the phone. Yeah. yeah, it's a very modern kind of concept, isn't it? A national trail with uh, QAR codes all the way along it. QR codes. In <laughs> augmented reality, interactive hiking. Whatever next. Yeah. So, just uh, chivying along. I'm just looking for somewhere moderately dry and sheltered. I can get the thermos out and try some of the coffee. So that'd be nice. So look forward to it. Yeah, making good time if not seeing much. I don't know, there's a certain melancholy enjoyment in the uh, gloomy, misty autumn English countryside forests. It's kind of grey and wet, rain-slicked wooden lack of, lack of leaves and so on. It's, I suppose, it's something that's best appreciated in hindsight in a pub or whatever, but you need to have these less than comfortable experiences to bring out the comfortable ones, I think. Anyway, I'm going to stop being philosophical because it's starting to rain again. See you in a bit. <clears throat> Impressive scenery, even on a day like this. There we go, the path I'm on. Goes down there, up that hill there, I think, next. And there are some chalk grasslands, I believe the uh, technical term. Downs there. Lovely. Even with the grisly weather, still quite impressive. A genteel kind of landscape, but one full of its own kind of beauty. Trouble is, with the rain and this chalk, and there's a very sort of clay sort of soil as well, it sort of mixes together to make a kind of very, yeah, kind of slippery, greasy sort of texture, which means going up there is going to be fun and games. <laughs> if I can get the traction at all, I'm going to have to be very careful. Yeah. Nice though, majestic in its own way. Is this an electric fence? No, good, right. It's not me I worry about, it's the camera. Not sure how mobile phone copes with an electric fence here. <laughs> I 
Well, it's not meant to be lethal, it's just in there to encourage cattle to move on, but uh, delicate microelectronics. Yeah. Right, I'm going to power on up the other side of there and then try and stop for some coffee, I think. Still no coffee, but this is far too windy up here to stop, so we're going down. stop there we go that's actually too hot to hold more or less so I'm just waiting for it to cool down to drinking temperature unbelievably thermos flask see yeah astonishing invention it's like somebody just sat down and thought right how can we keep a liter of liquid as close to 100 degrees as possible for as long as possible and they just engineered the hell out of it that's science and engineering and everything delivered into a consumer item that greatly changes our world. Very impressive. It's all done with vacuum, see? Silvered in a bottle, suspended in an outer bottle, little, little cork thingies, wedges to stop it smashing against each other. And that really will keep this basically slightly too hot to drink for at least 24 hours. It's amazing. Amazing what they can do nowadays. Yeah, there we go, coffee. Steaming. Can't quite see that, maybe. Maybe. Don't know. Anyway, so yeah, doing well. Rain spits and spots. Got me heard. Quite chilly, but I'm okay. I'm alright. I'm not, not uh, feeling the cold particularly. Keep moving. Let's stand around too long. Mind you, the coffee will help. Uh, yeah, off down there. I've just been buzzed by three mountain bikers. Very loud, raucous ones, too. Yes, my nemesis. So I thought I'd just stand here off the trail. That's actually the trail there. And they came buzzing through, yelling and stuff. We go downhill. Saw so another woman come running the other way. Running. Running, yeah. I mean, seven miles from Cocking to South Harting. That's about 10k, so yeah. A lot of up and down slippery, though. And cold. I don't know. I'm not sure I was ever that fit. <laughs> Trudging's more my style. Here we go. Some autumnal colour still. Well and truly, yeah, gone, gone all brown and copper and withery now though. Won't be long, won't be long. We'll be just be sticks again till like mid-March. Yeah. Alright, well I'm just still too... I can just about, well, yeah, it's just about drinking temperature now. But you just got to stand there with it out in the air. <laughs> cool down pretty quickly. Yeah. It's nasty old instant coffee I had lying around. It tastes a bit of gravy to be honest. I'm not entirely sure it isn't gravy, but you know, whatever, it's hot. Hot liquid, that'll do. Yeah. Just gonna leave you with some tree view there while I wait for my coffee to cool down. Morning. Hello. Steaming breath there. See, I'm hiking out in this now and thinking I'm a big survivor and a hero and everything. These people, these things live out in here, people. Yeah, cows are people too, why not? Yeah, they live up on here. Rain slicked back there, but then they're made of leather, so probably waterproof. Mind you, human beings are waterproof by that, by that measure. Hello. Windswept hilltops, nothing to these. Ah, so another hill, another hill conquered. Ah, in some woodlands now, I'm not quite sure where we go next. That way, I guess. That's the nice thing about this uh, whole adventure. These old national paths are generally very well marked. Big old acorn signboards everywhere. Yeah. Uh, get my breath back, and then I might think about a sandwich. Getting on for midday. Not quite sure progress, I'll have to check the map. But, um, yeah, going well. Wasn't expecting this to be difficult or strenuous, so it's good. Yeah, there's some fantastic mist in the background, look. 
Yeah. Just been checking up on some important tweets while I've been on the move. It's decent mobile coverage all the way along here, South Downs Way, Hampshire, West Sussex. And uh, turns out my co my co-host is posting pictures of a massive fried breakfast, so there you go. But I'm totally not questioning my life choices. Me, I've got a sandwich, which I might eat in a minute. <sighs> have a memorial way shrine here. Can't really read the inscription. It's a bit diff well, not defaced, just faded. I think it says in memoriam Hartman Joseph something Desterman Osterman. And then something in a foreign language underneath, Bill Old, something, say, 1915 to 1940. I'm guessing the poppies mean that it was a, a war casualty. Remembrance Sunday and all that, not long, not long past. Yeah, a way shrine. Nice spot though. Must have loved these hills, this walk. Some pheasants up on the road ahead. Keep your heads down, lads, so I can still hear the pop, pop, pops. That hasn't stopped yet. It's still pheasant season. I don't know when that'll be, uh, when that ends. Probably mid-December, I imagine. Yeah. Lots of, uh, was that ash, birch? Something like that. Lovely. I'll just add a sandwich, good to go. Let's crack on. Look a thing! The Devil's Jumps, Bronze Age burial mounds. Let's go tomb raiding! Yay! What have we got here anyway? Tumuli. See if we can find Excalibur. The Grail must be here somewhere. I know we're close. There they are, the Devil's Jumps. Some interesting uh, Bronze Age archaeology here. Not sure you're really allowed to go digging in them. Ah, a signboard. Jolly good. Okay. Well, that looks pretty much like what I can see there. Thanks, signboard. And some text. This group of mounds called Barrows dates back 3,000 years. Best example of Bronze Age Barrow Cemetery on the South Downs. Yeah. Some are left empty. Cremated bone in two of the large, nothing the small outlying ones. Oriented along the setting of the sun on Midsummer's Day. Yeah. Thank you, West Sussex County Council. There's some further reading and things there as well, and a contact. Yeah. Wonder just board could do with, I don't know, a bit of a clean. Maybe a fresh picture, it's a bit sun bleached. It's nice as something here at all. There we go. 3,000 years old. So there were people yomping up and down these ways for a long time before me. <laughs> Speaking of yomping, I think I can hear a Land Rover in the distance. That's cheating. That's not tomb raid today then. Well, yeah, still on the trail, it's good. And you just spotted this. It reads, Mark liked it here. 23rd of July 1960 to 26th of April 1998. <sighs> Touching and all, you know, but I hope there aren't too many more of those. That's, uh, this is a bit grim. Well, I think Mark had good taste. I like it here too. Although, perhaps on a better day with clearer view. There we go. We shall remember you, Mark. So, onward. Having thought about it, I'm not sure I've ever actually made my own wishes clear in that regard. So, I'd like for this to be uh, my witnessed last will and testament. When I die, I should like my remains to be fired into the sun, in accordance with uh, the cosmic harmony. 
So uh, all of you watching, uh, I expect you to carry that out in the event of my demise. Cheers. So I'll just check the map. Um, just under halfway, just coming out of this uh, leafy wood there. Well, and to something a bit more rugged, windswept, as you can probably hear on the camera. Microphone blowing, etc. Uh, look at that. Sweeping panoramas. And that's my route. Now, as far as I can tell, it's basically literally a straight line all the way to, to the end of the day now. About four miles to go, three or four. I'll do that in about an hour and a half, I think. <laughs> so it's only just like quarter past 12 so yes much better progress than I thought but I really don't dare push on further to uh, the next thing because there's nothing for another 10 miles beyond that short day that's not a bad thing so uh, off we go oh, some more bushcraft here some unusual tracks here we go I don't know some kind of bird seagull maybe is there a larger bird of prey? I don't know. I can't see the sort of hooky one at the back, so possibly a seagull. Doesn't look webbed. And there's a dog footprint there as well. I expect the seagull landed, picked up the dog, carried it away. So we're still on this uh, massive ridge top. Wind's died a bit, so I thought I'd try a bit of filming. So chalk grassland still. I think we're going up there next. It's a shredder cloud zooming across there. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine this is beautiful and spectacular in midsummer, but I imagine sunburn will be a problem up here, which is something I don't have to worry about today, so that's nice. Uh, I mean, you know, hypothermia, pneumonia, and uh, getting lost and dying of exposure, certainly, but no sunburn to worry about today, which is good, so look on the bright side. Every cloud has a silver lining, and these silver linings are reflecting a lot of sunshine into space. So, that's all good. Uh, more, more walking! Yay! Uh, a bit windy. So now coming down off the hill. Whoosh. Yeah, a good long yomp there. It's mined miles away. And um, yeah, I, I think that might be it actually down there. The, uh, one of those little horizontal lines is the, uh, the A289 or something. I'll have to check the map in a minute. But I feel like I might, might be there. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, knock off early today, I suppose. But yeah, like I say, I imagine this is probably lovely in summer, so I might have to come back again. I don't know what my summer project's going to be. I mean, if I'm if I'm doing the coast path in May, I'm going to need something to last me until I do the coast path again in September. So, some sort of project a bit like this one, I'll do do the same path but the other way around or something in summer or some different path entirely, who knows, plan that far ahead, god. Anyway, so yes, that's the, uh, this kind of track all the way to the end now I expect, and I think that might be it, yeah, you can just see cars flashing past across, well you can't, but I can, because my eyes are probably that good, yeah, they're in the middle, that junction I think. That is an odd thing. <laughs> Do you see odd things on these trails? It's, yes, an enormous limestone, limestone boulder. I don't think it's chalk. I don't know. Yeah, it feels, yeah. It's not granite, surely. I think it's been worked artificially. I mean, you know, the obvious question is what the hell is it doing here? Uh, and why is it here? And who brought it here? I don't think it's natural. Not part of these hills. Very odd. It's about two metres in diameter. And um, I'm very tempted to just roll it down the hill. Probably best not. How bizarre. Whew, so here we go. Uh, Restricted byway to Cocking, uh, three quarters of a mile. So this is basically the end of my trail for today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's about half past one, so I'm uh, about four hours early. 
oh, I don't know, I could push on, but I've got no idea what the trains and things are like from Embley. I haven't really done the prep, so... No, that's fine, it's easy. We'll, we'll call it half a day. It's fine. And particularly bearing in mind since the last, the last hiking outing fortnight ago, I didn't get home till quarter to ten in the, in the evening, so uh, at night. So it'd be nice to get home early and have a bit of a soak in the bath the rest of the day to myself. So yes, here we are, that uh, goes up there. See it zigzagging up onto the hill there. Eventually gets to Amberley, about 10 miles away. Which I could do today if I really pushed, but I've no idea how I'd get home or at what time, so nah, no, so let's, not, let's not overdo it. So that's a little footpath goes down there to uh, the village of Cocking, where I can get buses, and then I have to go to Midhurst and Hazelmere and Woking and all sorts of craziness. So, you know, I may yet not get home till 10, so. But uh, yeah, that up there, you can probably hear it quite clearly, the A289, car just going past, go on, go on, go on, I can see it, zoom, yeah, there you go, big major road right there, do it, whispering away, so yeah, yeah, it's quite good, right, I'll go down to the village, I'll well, see you there. So uh, I'm on a train. <laughs> Uh, I got to Cocking and the bus was there ready immediately and then that took me to Midhurst and the bus was there ready immediately and that took me to Hazelmere where the train was waiting immediately. This is the first chance I've had to get the camera out. Uh, anyway, so uh, thanks for following me and uh, watching and stuff and see you next time.